While SpaceX's Starship rocket stole the show with its spectacular landing on Flight 4, in space, there was a clown crying. Boeing's foolish Starliner once again was in big trouble, in addition to a helium leak causing it to fail temporarily just a few hundred meters from the ISS. Fortunately, our astronauts are finally safe. So why do these problems occur? How bad are those for NASA's astronauts? Can Dragon save the crew? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. After doing a successful liftoff on June 5th, Boeing Starliner went ahead into orbit with the goal of docking the ISS at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time on June 6th. However, its journey was very rocky. In fact, Starliner was given a go to hold at 260 meters from the space station. The verified culprit is two reaction control system jets that failed during the approach to the ISS, leading to the failure of five of the reaction control system thrusters. These smaller thrusters are used as the spacecraft moves closer to the space station so it can make more finely tuned changes to its trajectory. There are 28 total such thrusters located on the service module or the lower portion of Starliner, which will not return to Earth. A manual flight test has been put on hold while flight controllers look to restore those jets with a hot fire. Immediately, they conducted four hot fire tests on Starliner's failed thrusters and heard three of the four firings. The test confirmed two of the four reaction control system jets work properly and can be brought back into service. Flight control teams tried to beat the clock to analyze data on the Starliner's reaction control system, RCS thruster, whereas two NASA astronauts, Butch and Suni, were slightly retreated further away from the ISS. This is very dangerous. As far as I know, Starliner in this case can be captured into orbit of another planet or even fall in if it approaches another planet without enough velocity relative to it to go into orbit. A given short-term solution is shifting out of manual control and back into an automated mode. Then, additional hot fire tests of three RCS thrusters are in work. Due to the issues, the next docking window will be delayed by approximately one hour and 18 minutes. The new schedule will be between 12.33 and 1.19 p.m. CT, from 1.33 to 2.19 p.m. ET. Through many efforts, Starliner later approached and stayed within the keepout sphere, which is 200 meters radius around the ISS as shown in this image. By then, it was moving at a pace of about 23 centimeters per second. Teams continued a slow approach until they reached the planned hold at 10 meters out. When fewer than 80 meters away from the ISS, the engineers, through several hot fire tests, brought back four of five reaction control system, RCS, thrusters that had gone offline. Those four thrusters paved the way for CST-100 to head towards the 10 meter mark from ISS and hold until lighting conditions improved. Finally, at 1.34 p.m. ET, Starliner docking was confirmed with Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. Clearly, they're glad to get off Starliner. After opening the hatch, mission teams entered the station. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will spend the next eight days on the station, joining the seven astronauts and cosmonauts already aboard the station. So, how about you? Do you think Starliner's mission this time is successful? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. In addition to the above problem, Starliner also encountered another problem on its journey, a helium gas leak. The helium leaks are minor. Of course, helium is an inert gas, not toxic, not flammable. Thus, NASA and Boeing raised their confidence it wouldn't affect the flight's safety, or even if a leak rate was 100 times worse than what's been observed to date the Starliner could still fly safely. Unfortunately, the in-flight leak is more than expected with three helium leaks manifested in various parts of the ship's propulsion system again. Two of the three leaks were corrected on Thursday morning. The leaks were not expected to impact docking, according to the broadcast. Boeing aerospace engineer Jim May confirmed that, currently, the helium leak is not a safety issue for the crew, the vehicle, or the mission. Nevertheless, the flight control team will continue to monitor the leak rates in Starliner's propulsion system and, after docking, all of Starliner manifolds were closed per normal plans, according to NASA. Talking about this mission, a Canadian retired astronaut, Chris Hadfield, shared his thoughts. My thoughts are with Suni and Butch, alone now out on the pad, 
the first people to ever fly this rocket and spaceship. A huge risk on behalf of us all. His words make sense. First of all, two continuous incidents on Starliner have caused tension for astronauts. NASA and Boeing determined the crew was safe and told the duo to go to sleep while they continued to look at the data. The crew was supposed to sleep for nine hours, but the troubleshooting effort cut into an hour of rest time. Secondly, such a frequent and significant helium leak will lead to a shortage of propellant and oxidizer flowing through your thrusters. You know, helium is required to push the propellant through the system, especially for the RCS thruster. Once the thruster is not fed enough food, it cannot maneuver properly to dock to ISS or re-entry. Yes, they have a great deal of redundancy built inside the thrusters, but who knows which will happen for all of them, right? Everything needs to be as precise as possible, especially for crewed flight tests with humans aboard. The thrusters need to work well in order to make sure that the ship is properly oriented toward the atmosphere. This has a big impact on the next component, the thermal protection system which ensures the survival chances of these astronauts. It's so great, as Boeing Starliner can dock to ISS and the astronauts can be safe during the ascent phase, but what about the descent? What if the disaster involving the helium leak and thrusters continued while it was about to plummet to Earth with ambient temperatures reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit? I think the best way, in this case, is to call for the support of SpaceX Dragon. If Starliner was deemed unsafe for re-entry and left the crew stranded, then NASA would likely need to rejig their ongoing crew rotations to bring them back on a Dragon. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure many would rather ride back to Earth on Starliner if it's deemed to be safe to do so. Having to send a Dragon up for them would be a nightmare for everyone involved. Boeing developed the Starliner capsule as a part of NASA's commercial crew program, a partnership between the agency and private companies to ferry astronauts into low Earth orbit following the retirement of NASA's space shuttles in 2011. SpaceX's Crew Dragon also came from this initiative and has racked up 12 crewed flights since it began operating in 2020, but Boeing's capsule has lagged significantly behind. Starliner's first uncrewed test flight in 2019 was scuppered by a software fault that placed it in the wrong orbit, and a second attempt was held back by issues with a fuel valve. After more reviews last year, the company had to fix issues with the capsule's parachutes and remove around a mile. 1.6 kilometers of tape that was found to be flammable. The current launch is Boeing's third attempt to take the crew to the ISS. The previous two were scrubbed by a vibrating oxygen valve on the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket on which Starliner is mounted and which was developed by Lockheed Martin and a computer glitch in a ground launch sequencer, respectively. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.